first color we're going to work with is Space Wolves Grey, and this is for, unsurprisingly, all of his armor. So what we're going to do is we're going to take just a little bit of this on our brush. We don't want too much because we don't want to overwhelm the model's details. We're going to pick a place to start, and I'm going to start down here on the foot. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make contact with the model, and I'm just going to do these kind of big, broad brush strokes to just kind of almost kind of stain the armor this color. I don't want to overwhelm the model too much. I want to have plenty of control as I do this because Space Wolves Grey is quite a thin paint. And what I mean by that is it's just it, if you kind of put too much on at once, you very much get that kind of blotchy contrast effect, which we definitely don't want for this. So we just want to have lots and lots of control as we do the armor plates. Just taking our time like this. And similarly again, for the back of the leg, I'm gonna make contact at the top. I'm gonna to pull it all the way down. So I'm gonna make contact and just pull that paint down like this. I'm gonna keep doing it like that. I just get this nice, smooth finish on the armor panel. Once that Space Wolves Grey is all dry, what we're going to do is we're going to add a very thin glaze of Rust Grey. And we're talking like sort of seven parts contrast medium to Rust Grey. Uh, just to create this super, super, super fine, thin uh, Rust Grey mix. And what we're going to do is we just want to kind of use this to strengthen the color of those lot sections of open panel like this and we just it, it almost creates like a glaze um this this kind of this kind of mix so we just as i said we're just applying this to the flat panels like so just to kind of as i say just strengthen up that color that little bit more just in certain places, like I'm doing here. And with that rust gray glay style layer applied, we're now gonna do some highlights. And for this, we're gonna be using some thinned down Fenrisian gray. And this is just on all of the edges that are scattered around his armor. So starting down here on his leg, I just wanna paint this Fenrisian gray as an edge highlight, like so. We wanna go around and we just wanna catch all of these edges with this paint to give it the impression of the light catching on the armor. With that highlight applied, the Space Wolves gray aspect of the armor is complete. So what we're gonna do is move on to the black details and starting with the shoulder pad and the soft bits, we're gonna leave the hair in that for now. Um, but for the shoulder pad, what we're going to do is we're going to do a coat of Basilicanum Grey. We're not going to do this on the soft parts of the armour, because we're just going to do that with a black coat instead. So for the shoulder pad, we're going to take some Basilicanum Grey on our brush, and we're just going to paint a pre-shaded layer of this all over the inside of the shoulder pad. You want to be very careful around those runes, because we really don't want to overwhelm them with the grey at this point. Just want to very steadily around all of that Space Wolves armor that we've already painted. Just apply this Basilicanum Grey. Once that Basilicanum Grey is dry, we're going to use some Black Templar as a coat over it. And we're going to do this in much the same way we did with the Basilicanum Grey, just being very calm and considered as we did as we as we approach it. So we just want to start by the wolf's head and just pull it towards the rim, like this. This will give us a nice strong black color for this shoulder pad. Continuing with the black Templar just for now, we're gonna coat in all of the smooth parts of the armor. So these are the joins in between the hard armor plates. 
We want to be very, very careful here. With that black Templar applied, you can also see that I filled in this part of the belt of rust and also the feather sword thing that's on his, on his, on his leg. And so what we're going to do is we're going to highlight all of this black detail. And we're going to be doing this with some thinned down Dawnstone. So we want to do this on all of the edges of all of the black that we've added. So on the soft parts, we just want to pick out the the ribbing. Like so. On the sword, we want to pick out like the feathers. And the kind of central. Spine. And next up, just to finish off these black details, we're going to do a spot highlight of administratum grey. So we put some thin down on our palette. And all we want to do is we're just going to pick out the very kind of sharpest parts of these Dawnstone highlights that we've already applied. So things like on the tips of the feathers and things down here. With that done, we're now going to move on and we're going to paint the cape uh, before we go back and do all the gold and stuff. And so what we're going to do is we're going to do the uh, the interior of the cape first because the fur... We kind of we want to do that last because um, there's so much of it all over and we kind of we don't want to have to kind of pick around the fur when we're doing the interior. So what we're going to use is we're going to use Blood Angels Red and what we want to do is we want to grab a fair amount of this on our brush and we want to kind of pick a point where we're comfortable to start. So I'm going to start up here and we want to pick a recess to start in and we want to make contact with the model and then just pull it down in one big stroke like that. And we wanna just keep going around all of the cape like this. We don't. We wanna use as few brush strokes as we possibly can here because we don't want it to look patchy. And just kind of doing it like this helps to mitigate for that somewhat. Once that Blood Angel's red is dry, we want to add some depth to the cape. And for this, we're going to be using some Flesh Terror's red. So we just want to take some of this on our brush and we want to kind of pick some recesses within which to kind of add some of this depth. I've actually got a little bit too much Flesh Terror's red there. So we're just going to pick this recess here and we're just going to make contact with the model and just run this paint inside that recess like this. And once that flesh tear is red is dry, we're gonna take a tiny, tiny bit of Saigor Brown just to further establish those kind of deep parts of the cloak. And this is, you just don't wanna put very much of this in here. You just wanna kind of keep it more towards the kind of, the, the, the closer to the body, the better with this paint. So you kind of get this gradual fade from the Saigal Brown to the Flesh Terror's Red, out to the Blood Angel's Red, like that. So similarly again, just on this recess here, just going to add that tiny bit of that Saigal Brown in there. And next up, we're going to highlight the cloak using some Evil Sun Scarlet. So we just want to pick out all of the edges and raise details in the cloak. So starting here, along this edge here. You want to go around picking out all these highlights. Once that Evil Sun Scarlet is dry, we're going to do a highlight of Fire Dragon Bright. And this is just for the extreme tips of things. So we just want to kind of place a little bit of it going like this along the edge of the cloak. So we get that Evil Sun Scarlet through to the Fire Dragon Bright transition and similarly around the kind of rips and tears in the cloak so we just want to kind of 
have it a little bit either side of it, like so. And finally, to tie all of that work that we've done on the cake together, we're going to do a six to one mix of Flesh Terrors Red and Contrast Medium. I'm going to use this like a glaze and we just want to paint this all over the cloak. So I'm just going to start here on the underside like this. And this will tie together all of the highlights and all of those kind of base colours that we've put on. And just kind of unify them under one kind of single banner. With the red of the cape complete, it's now time to move on to all of the fur, and there is a lot of it, as was befitting Ragnar Blackmane of the Space Wolves. So, in order to do the fur, the first thing we need to do is we need to think about the sections in which we're painting this, and I highly recommend that you do this before you start, um, just so that you kind of, you know roughly how the colours are going to fade together. Um, and so, the, the sections I'm going to do it in are this section here, so the first part of the pelt. We've got this one under here, which is completely separate. We've then got the head as a section, this part of the pelt as a section, and then you've got the whole of the back of the cloak as one kind of big one. So the paints that we're gonna use are Skeleton Horde, Agaros Dunes, Wildwood, and Black Templar. And so we're going to start on this front one here and we want to do all of this whilst it's still wet. So you want to take a fair chunk of this on our brush and we're going to just start coating this skeleton hoard all over this part of the pelt. We want to get a nice good coverage here. Grab a little bit more to finish that little bit out. Like this. There we go. So with the first coat on, we now give our brush a quick wash and we grab some Agaros Dunes. We want to apply this kind of to the central part, stopping around about three quarters of the way down. So we want to kind of make contact here and pull it to around there. We need to do a couple of passes at this to build that colour up. But Agaros Dunes is kind of similar to Skeleton Horde in many ways. Just a little bit darker. So once that Agaros Dunes is on there, similarly again, we want to grab some Wildwood. I mean, we don't want to go as far with this. So we're just going to, once again, start here and we want to apply this Wildwood like this in the center of where all that Agaros Dunes is. I'm going to add a little bit more Wildwood. Like that. And then, finally, we want to take some Black Templar. And we just want to add this to the middle of that Wildwood like that. Take a little bit more Black Templar. Once all that fur is dry, we're gonna do a little bit of a highlight on some of the parts of the fur, and we're gonna be using some Screaming Skull for this. And what we want to do is we wanna kind of pick out the, uh, the edges of some of these kind of strands of hair so we just want to kind of pick out the bits kind of going around the edge of the fur like this we don't want to kind of venture too much into the central part because we want that to be nice and dark and the contrast has done most of the work for us so here we just want to 
which you want to pick out like this. And next up, we want to dot the eyes with just a little bit of Uriel yellow. And next up, we want to paint in the pupil. And for this, we're going to use Black Templar. We don't want very much of this on our brush. And we just want to very carefully, in the middle of the eye, paint a small line. And next up, for the claws on the pelt, we're going to use two colours. We're going to use Basilicatum Grey and Black Templar. And what we want to do is we want to take, first we want to take the Basilicatum Grey and we want to just coat it all over the claw, like so. Just make sure you get both sides. And of course the underside as well. And then what we want to do take just a bit of the Black Templar and just kind of build it up like that closest to where the claws meet. And lastly we want to take some Administratum Grow and we want to run this as like a little highlight and we want this to go along the side of the claw. and across the top. And with that, the wolf pelt with the claws and the eyes is all done. So now we're gonna move on and return to painting the rest of the model. So what we're gonna start is we're gonna do the leather parts. And for this, we're gonna be using Gore Grunter fur. We wanna be quite careful as we do this because we don't wanna get any of it on our Space Wolves armor that we've already painted. So we just wanna be very kind of considered with our brush strokes. So taking the Gorgon to fur on our brush, we just want to kind of make contact with the model and just pull it down like this. And this is going to give you a really kind of pale, reddy brown. Like so. Once that Gorgon to fur is dry, we want to now darken down all of that leather. And for this, we're going to be using some wild wood. I'm going to apply this in a slightly different way to how we would normally. So what we want to do is we want to just take a tiny little bit of it on our brush. And we just want to paint this wild wood all over the kind of the flats of the leather. Like so. But we just want to leave the edge. We don't want to kind of get any of this wild wood on the edge because we want to essentially leave the Gorgranta fur as the highlight. So once again, we're just going to do this wild wood here. And next up, we want to use a tiny amount of Carrick stone, just as a little spot highlight, just on the sharpest corners, corners of the leather. Just there, like that. And next up, we're going to work on the red details. And for this, Going to be like things like the edge of the belt of Russ, his top knot, and the guard on the chainsword. And for this, we're going to be using Blood Angel's red. So we just want to take some on our brush. We just want to pick an area to start. And I'm going to start down here on the belt of Russ. Once that Blood Angel's red is dry, we're going to give all those red highlight, uh, red details a highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. And next up, we want to give a very, very small spot highlight of Fire Dragon Bright.
And next up, we're going to paint in all the gold details. And for this, we're going to be using some Retributor armor. And these are all over the model, so I recommend picking up, look, checking out the box art. Just to have a look and see where you want to place the gold. And next up, we're going to shade all of that gold with some Gilliman Flesh. Once that Gilliman flesh is dry, we're going to give all of that gold a highlight of Liberator Gold. So we just want to pick out all of the edges. Um, so I'm going to start here on the on the shoulder pad. So we just want to pick out all of the edges with this colour. And just to round off all of that gold, we're going to add a little bit of Stormhost Silver just to the absolute extreme corners of some of these gold highlights. This just gives it a little bit of extra sparkle. Like so. With those gold details finished, we're now going to work on the Chainsword, or Frost Fang, I believe it's called. Um, before we do the silver, what we want to do is we want to do the kind of the flat of the blade. And this is because if we, you know, we don't want to kind of get any of the yellow on the kind of that silver that we will have already done. So we're going to do the yellow part first. And for this, we're going to be using Eandon yellow. And what we want to do is we want to take it on our brush. Quite a fair amount like that. And in order to paint this in, we just want to kind of make contact at the top and pull it down towards the base so that the darker colour stays down here. So once again, we're just going to make contact with the model and pull it down. Like so. Once that end and yellow is dry, you can see that the blades are looking pretty fantastic now. And so what we're going to do is we're going to add a little bit of wildwood. And this is just for the inside of the runes on the blade. So you want to be very, very, very careful here. And you just want to only use a little tiny amount and you just take your time here. And you just want to run this wildwood inside those recesses. And lastly, we want to give just a little tiny highlight of phalanx yellow around the edge of the flat of the blade. And with that, we can now move on to all the metallic silver details. And for this, we're gonna be using some thinned down iron warriors. And this is for all of the things like the chains and the spikes on the chainsword, all those kinds of things. You just want to go around and apply this Iron Warriors to all of these details. Once all that Iron Warriors is dry, we're going to give it all a shade of Basilicon and Grey, but we're also going to cover over all of the kind of teeth and claws and stone fetishes that are around the model. So we just want to use Basilicon and Grey for this. And we want to take it on a brush. And we just want to start painting this over all of that silver and the teeth and claws like so. Once all that Basilicanum grey is dry, we want to use just a touch of Black Templar. And this is going to be one around the base of all of the kind of the fangs and things. So, for example, on these ones here, we just want to add a touch of this Black Templar like this to the top of the fang. Similarly, again, we just want to add a little bit there. And a little bit there. And next up, to highlight all those teeth and stone things, we're going to use a bit of some thin down administratum grey. We just want to apply this as a little fine edge highlight. So on the tooth here, we just want to 
draw a line of this administratum grey going all the way down the tooth from the base where that black is to the tip. And lastly, to finish off all of these teeth, we're just going to add a little bit of grey here to the ends of the teeth. Uh, and this is just to kind of make them look extra razor sharp. And so next up, we're going to give all of those silver details a highlight of iron hand steel. So you just want to pick out, for example, on the chamber, you just want to pick out the tops of the links. And next up, we're going to use a spot of Blood Angel's Red to cover over all of the gems that are scattered around Ragnar. Ragnar. So you can see them one here on his on the belt of Russ, and there's a couple on his gauntlets and things. And so for this, we're going to use the Blood Angel's Red, as I've already said. I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to very carefully, so that we don't get any of the Blood Angel's Red around the rim, I'm just going to paint this red all over the shiny gem part. And next up, we want to give all those gems a highlight of Evil Sun Scarlet. We just want to do this going across the middle line. So we want to go like this and across the side line. And next up, we want to use a dot of Fire Dragon Bright just at the very tip of the gem. like this. And next up it's time to move on to the face. And so for the this what we're going to use is we're going to use dark oath flush. And what we want to do is we want to grab some on our brush like that sort of amount and we want to pick a place to start on the model and then we want to move to the recess. So what we want to do is we kind of want to start at the base of the chin and pull it up to the hairline. So with this paint, we're going to start at the base of the chin and pull it up to the hairline like that. I'm going to keep doing it like this with this paint. Once that dark oath flesh is dry, we want to Give, uh, create a rough five to one mix of contrast medium to wildwood. And what we want to do is we want to take just a tiny little bit of this mix on our brush. And we just want to kind of just add this into the darkest parts of the flesh around his facial features. like so. And next up, we want to pick out all of the raised details on the face with some thinned down Kislev flesh. So we just want to kind of pick out places like the nose, and his brow, And next up, we want to use a teeny tiny bit of flayed one flesh just on the like the tip of the nose and the corner of the brow there and up here and just there where the skin parts for the scar. A tiny little bit on this raised cheekbone here. Just places like this, like the absolute sharpest parts of the skin. And similarly, once again, we want to use a little bit of Screaming Skull, and this is for the teeth and for the eyes. So we just want to add this Screaming Skull very carefully now. Along the teeth. And 
And you really want to take your time at this part because you don't want to get this on any of that skin that you've already painted or even on the edge of that armor. And next up to finish off the eyes, we just want to use a little tiny, teeny tiny bit of black Templar. And you want to be very steady here as we add a dot of the black Templar right in the middle, like that. And with the face complete, we're now going to paint the hair. And for this, we're going to be using black Templar. Just want to pick a point to start. So let's start right at the end of one of these strands. I just want to paint this black Templar all over the hair. And next up, we want to give all of that hair a highlight of Dawnstone. So you just want to pick out the strands of the hair with this colour. And lastly, to finish off the hair, we want to use a tiny bit of Administratum Grey. We just want to pick out certain parts of the hair just to give it that impression of the light catching. So things like on the braids here, we're just going to add a tiny little bit of this paint like this, just to just to give it a little bit more oomph. And with that, Ragnar is now complete. So all that's left to do is work on his base. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna paint the underside of this rock. And we're gonna use Black Templar for this. And we don't wanna use a lot. We don't want this to be a very dark. We just want this to be a slightly different colored gray to the top part. So we're gonna use just a bit of Black Templar. Uh, and we're gonna to wanna to paint this in sections under here. So we kind of wanna just kind of pick one. So I'm gonna pick this big one here. And we just wanna add this Black Templar all over this section like this. And the reason we do it in sections is so that we can keep it within the recesses and we can keep the top part of it quite smooth. So once again, I'm just going to pick the next one and we're going to do this. And next up, we're going to use some gray seer on the front of the uh, fallen Aquila. And so this makes our job quite easy because it's already divided into sections for us. So we want to pick out the eagle head down here with this color. Like so. And we also want to pick out the kind of the big parts as well. So we can just make contact with the model and pull this paint across like that. And we just want to go around doing all of these parts like so. And next up, I'm going to give all of that soil a coat of wildwood. Once that's dry, we're going to pick out all the metallics on the base with some thin down iron warriors. Once that Iron Warriors is dry, we're going to give it a shade of Basilicanum Grey. And next up, we're going to give that skull a coat of Skeleton Horde. And now's a good opportunity to fill in the rest of the base. Um, because what we're going to do is we want to do a dry brush, right, of, um, of, of, of a colour to kind of give all of the base a kind of unifying highlight. So it looks like it's the same kind of dust and dirt that's blowing around. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm going to be using Sterling Battlemire here to match with the soil that I've painted in already with the wildwood. 
Once that sterling battle mire is dry, we're going to give the base a dry brush of Tyrant Skull all over. So we want to catch all the stone, all of the soil, all of the metal work, all of it. So just want to keep, just go around like this. And we want to be careful once we get close to the model, obviously, because we don't want to get any of this really on, on Ragnar. So we just want to get a nice dry brushed coat of this Tyrant Skull all over like this. And last but not least, we want to give a very, very gentle dry brush of Praxetti White just over the stonework like this, just to kind of make that stuff look a little bit colder than the rest of the, the rest of the dirt. And there you have it, Ragnar's all done. I really enjoyed painting this one and I hope you enjoyed watching this video. He is a stunning miniature and I think he's my favorite of the Primaris hit rows so far. Thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.